Okay, welcome back to another uh, radio show. You now are tuning in to 88.7. Very well, welcome to those who joined us today. And today's topic, we'll be talking about the Enlightenment and really how the main people that uh, influence people and like how the world's views changed. Today on the mic, I have Sully and Chase Rhodes. Hi. Chase, what's our first topic of today? Uh, we're going to be talking about the scientific revolution. <clears throat> Sully, do you have more, uh, more information on this topic? So, the scientific revolution basically started near, well, in the late 16th hundred, well, six, 16th centuries and the 18th centuries, where, like, the influencers, like, philosophies found new discoveries for people to find. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, before we get in our ad break, uh, we have to go in more in depth and finish this topic. Chase, do you have any more information on this topic or any opinions or anything? Okay, so basically, um, as Sully said, um, it started in the late 16th to 18th century. And these there were these influencers that were referred to as philosophers that made these amazing discoveries that impacted the world in many ways. So it was emerging, basically, people were discovering modern science more back then because we didn't have that broad of a scope of modern science that we have today so people were just learning about these things and discovering them and it kind of started the enlightenment and that's so yeah i mean meaning some leaders making their civilization civilization a better place like you know these people were making scientific discoveries which uh ended up uh furthering our civilization and uh better enhancing our understanding of science so yeah. people notice that these philosoph philosophers uh, found something new and could change the world like the scientific revolution brings us a new meaning after the greeks had different ways of science it was built on top of the way that the greeks had learned it and it was added more by the romanian science and middle medieval islamic science so basically what that means is we took these sciences from like the greeks and we built upon it and made it better kind of like we made it more modernized and understandable and discovered some new things yeah so basically the scientific revolution was just people realizing oh wait what i have been like told and what i've been learning is basically false and my life is a lie <laughs> and yeah these, basically <laughs> these people that come along and say you're wrong you're all just stupid you gotta listen to us because like we're basically geniuses and we know what we're talking about and yeah yeah basically that but in a more humble way yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> and honestly i feel bad for the philosophers because they got some hate they got they got hate when they were like saying this stuff because like people were like no 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 this has been true for more than like more than like five decades and then you can't just come along and be like you all this is all just a lie you know yes yeah <laughs> now on to our second topic which is how do people's understanding of the universe change okay um i guess i can talk and take this one too so um, the people's understanding of the universe was changed by these philosophers back then because they had this they had this mindset that these things were these ways and that they couldn't be any other way. But these philosophers were basically telling them, no, you're wrong, and this is how it actually is. So, like, they were making new discoveries that later down the road impacted future discoveries, like, say, Newton's gravity impacted um, the ability to help us create airplanes because they needed to understand how gravity worked to do that. So the scientific revolution helped us create more useful tools and machines that allowed the human race to become more efficient and uh, 
basically just all around better. So um, we can share these share these uh, ideas, other countries to gain more knowledge of the future, and it basically just brought us together as a the whole human race together, you know. So yeah. More more importantly, the scientific revolution taught us that we shouldn't look for results that we're scientifically we should look for the results that we are scientifically most likely to occur. Not the results that we're looking or hoping for. You know what I mean? So like we learned to broaden our scope of reality, not looking for one single possibility, but looking for any possibility, whether we like it or not. This helped us better understand our universe was truly structured like about how our universe was truly structured truly functioned. An example yeah. of this mm-hmm. would be how when Copernicus discovered the heliocentric solar systems. So he discovered that the solar systems um, did not, in fact, resolve around the Earth. You know what I mean? It revolves, it revolves around the sun more. But, well, it doesn't resolve around, revolve around the sun more. It does revolve around the sun. Anyways, so when he did this, he neglected to do the calculations, see if the planets were just rotating around the sun in a perfect circle or not, because he wanted to believe that the planets all just orbited around the sun in a perfect circle. That just made more. I mean, that that made it easier for him, and it made it more. I don't know. It made it more. It made it feel better. It made it more together. You know, you would rather just see it as a perfect, like a perfect um, circle, as opposed to what it is actually. Lipped. It's more of like an egg. So we learned to basically. We learned to basically instead of take in only the stuff that we want to see, we learn to take in everything from what these philosophers taught us. Yeah. We basically had a better understanding of nature and how it worked. To sum it up. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, up next... Uh, we are taking a musical break and to science. Uh, once again, you're listening to 88.7, and here is your music for today. Hopefully you guys liked that music, and welcome back to 88.7, where we talk about classical topics like the Enlightenment and listen to classical music for all of you studying in full homework. Now back to our topic for today, which we were just talking about how nature and people got a better understanding in nature, and really what like what we're going to be talking about, which is the scientific revolution. Now, some of these uh, philosophers were Galileo, Kepler, Newton, Velasquez, Harvey, Lazar, and Bacon. Now, what were their key uh, accomplishments, Chase? Oh. I think Sully should take this one. Okay, Sully. Sully, what is uh, what are their accomplishments of these people? 
during the scientific revolution. All right. So, uh, Newton. So, I think everyone knows that Newton found, like, about gravity. But the success of Newton was that he captured, well, yeah, he captured, like, a few mathematical equations that the law governed the motions of the planets. He gave, like, great impetus to, like, a growing faith into human. Like, gaining knowledge, basically. And then, like, he, he, like, gave, like, people ideas, like how I said at the beginning, like, he found, basically, by, like, dropping apples or something like that. And then Galileo Galilei, he was considered, like, the father of modern, modern science. And, uh... He made major contributions to like the field of physics, astronomy, cosmology, mathematics, and philosophy. Like he invented telescope, like in that that made us observe like different planets throughout the solar system. Yeah, some of these were the moon, Jupiter, the rings of Saturn, and the phases of the Venus. Venus, uh, sunspots, and the rugged lunar surface. Um, uh, his flair for self-promotion earned him a powerful, uh, powerful friends among Italy's uh, ruling elite and enemy along the Catholic leaders. Now, he was actually enemies with the Catholic Church because some of the stuff he was talking about went against the Catholic beliefs, which really, you know, if, you know, if you're talking about something the Catholics didn't like, I think that'd make you enemies with Catholic leaders. Um, Galileo's advocacy and heliocentric universe brought him, brought him before regions authorities in 16, in 1616 and again in 1633, when he was forced to recant and placed under house arrest for the rest of his life. Now, um, Galileo actually went to the Pope and uh, asked if it was okay if he, like, said the stuff he was going to say, but then he changed it, and then the Catholics weren't okay with it. So then they're like, hey, we don't like you, so like, we don't like what you're doing either. So like, we're just gonna put you in your house for the rest of your life, you feel? Well, he didn't, he didn't, he more, um, called the Catholic priest kind of stupid, and yeah. kind of dissed them more than he did change what he was going to say. He just, yeah, he, yeah, he kind of, he kind of, um, decided to call the Catholic priest and stuff stupid. Because they were wrong, but I mean, like he he went to the Catholic priest to get yeah he went to the Catholic priest to get permission, and then he told everybody basically that this was the right way and that it was stupid. And then he got like a big like house arrest or something like that. Yeah, yeah he house got arrest for the rest yeah. of life. Yeah. Next up is Jonas Kepler, which is a German who influenced the science of Europe in the Enlightenment period. He learned philosophy, phys, physiology, theology, mathematics, and astronomy. However, most famous people know degree is astronomy and mathematics. Jonas Kepler was a phenomenal person at math and astronomy. He made great connection with astronomy and mathematics. Kepler is well known as his work called Kepler Law of Planetary Motion. Kepler's law of planetary motion is compressed of three laws. First law of planetary motion is that planets move elapsed with the sun at one focus. At the 
at that time appeared Kepler Nu, six planets, Earth, Venus, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. He could find out the planet's smooth elliptical orbit, and at that time, ancient people believed that the planets orbit in a circle. And basically, he proved that they don't, and it's more than oval. Except the astronomer named Copernicus has an idea that the Earth rotates around the Sun. German, uh, Kepler proved his point, however, without uh, Brahe and Ustin, Kepler would not be able to find out his first thought. Ustin was a uh, masculine, was a professor of Kepler who taught him about Copernicus. Heliocentric theory, although it was not illegal for teachers to talk about the heliocentric theory, but later, due to his effort, Kepler believes more on the heliocentric theory. And uh, Bry is a astronomer who gave Kepler a chance to observe planets' movement and the second law that ra uh, radius vector describes equal areas in equal times. The motion this law describes also tells us that the average distance from a planet to the sun is equal to the length of the semi-major axis, and it also the closest to point to the sun leads up to the The closest point to the scene is the fastest point in the orbit, and the further away this uh, planet moves, the slower. Lastly, third, Kepler's third law is that the uh, squares of the periodic times are to, are to each other as the cubes of the mean distances. It means that if I know either how much time a planet's orbit around the sun takes, I can find the average distance from the sun. Later on, this proved Isaac Newton and the information necessary to find out the gravity and processional mathematics. Other than this, Kepler did a lot of other things, such as proving Kepler's, teles uh, Kepler's telescope. And with his, his telescope, he found supernova for the first time. And as well as he corrected Galileo's work. Galileo claimed that tides are caused by the Earth, but Kepler said that the tides are caused due to Moon, and this information is well known in the 21st century about idea tides. Not ideas, tides. This man is one of the greatest astronomers who influenced the science of Europe in the Enlightenment age. That's basically the rundown on Kepler. Chase, who is next in our topic? Uh, that would be Andreas Vesalius. So he is a Belgian-born uh, autonomous, and, and he was trained at Hada, where he would later train or the next generation of philosophers. Uh, Vesalius represents the spirit of enlightenment critique in that he believed that an automatist, bleh, sorry, an automatist, atom, atom, atomist, <laughs> holy heck, uh, must have first hand knowledge of the body. So basically, a break over a millennium of anatomical practice. Why am I struggling to say that word? Jeez, <laughs> sorry, guys. So. Basically, he believed that um, uh, he should, that everyone should have, all doctors should have first-hand knowledge of the human body instead of just going in blind. Yeah. And wasn't he, like, like one of the first people to actually cut up bodies? Like, back yeah. then, people so, didn't really cut up bodies, but he did. Yeah, he went in, he went in and he, um, he kind of categorized all the human body, like all the organs inside the human body, and made the first one of the first, like I think it was actually the first, um, like charts of like all the human organs and stuff like that, and where they were if you needed to find them. It ended up saving a bunch of lives down the road, helping doctors um, fix problems that they never knew to solve, like fix before. Yeah, because if you didn't open up the body, you couldn't really see what was happening in the body. Yeah, because but, you didn't really cut it up. Doctors were scared to open the bodies because they didn't want to, you know, kill the person. Yeah. And, like, the person could be affected or anything or have a disease. Yeah. And if you cut up the body, then, you know. Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, Sully, who is next on our list of important 
people during the uh, um, scientific revolution. All right. So William Harvey was one of the most important people of the scientific re revolution. He's both he's like famous for discovering like how blood is circulating throughout the body and discovering how mammals reproduce. His work paved in a way for modern cardiology and embryology research. So he what I said already like he found out that the blood doesn't like well it circles around the body but it starts like from the heart of the body instead of somewhere else okay yeah. uh, thank you silly yes. okay so yeah. <laughs> uh zeke would you like to cover our uh Next person. Oh. Yes, our next our next person is uh Antonio and Antoni Antoine. Antoine La Lavoisier. Lavioser. Lavioser. Sorry, my bad. My bad boys. Uh, okay. So born into a wealthy family, French family, Antoni Lavoisier is considered to be the founder of modern chemistry. He and his wife, Marie Annie uh, Preti Pousley, collaborated on numerous scientific projects. Lavoisier was a polymath inspired by the ideas of alignment. His studies included philosophy and the law. He invented many new instruments and very accurate quantum Quantitative methods to analyze elements contained in chemical compounds. These inventions led him to identify the element oxygen, which, like, is what we breathe in. So, uh, it's kind of important. He also developed a new uh, method of chemical non mounture a way of naming chemical chemical substances, which is with uh, modification is still used today. If you look at the periodic table, it's how we name the actual things that's on the table. His, exper his experimental methods of chemical analysis were crucial for finding and isolating many medical active substances in the late 1700s, from morphine to quine. Lavier's work as a tax collector for the king led him to be executed by the French revolutionaries on the guillotine. After Louis' execution, his wife continued to fight for the recognition of his ideas, bringing together and publishing his final work. Alright, thank you, Zeke. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to move on to our next topic, which was... What was it, Zeke? Our next topic is what is the Enlightenment, which is different different from the scientific revolution because it's like the Enlightenment is like uh, spiritual. The scientific revolution is like uh, science. You know. Uh, do okay. you guys have any uh, extra information on this topic? Yeah. So. Um, the Enlightenment is a European intellectual movement of 17th and 18th centuries in which ideas concerning God, reason, nature, and humanity were synthesized to a worldview that gained wide assent in the West investigate and instigated revolutionary de developments in art, philosophy, and politics. So, the... Uh, Dude, you can't talk. <laughs> Dude. So, um, the Enlightenment, um, so, Dude. um, the goals of rational humanity were knowledge, freedom, and uh, sorry. So, anyways, power and uses of freedom had first been explored by the philosophers of 
and then the Romans adopted and considered much of the Greek culture, notably including the ideas of a uh, rational natural order and natural law. Amid the turmoil of empire, however, a new concern arose for personal salvation, and the way was paved for a triumph of Christian religion. So, Christian thinkers gradually found uses for their co-greco, co-greco-roman heritage, which is basically just a combination of reason. So, the system of thought known as uh, scholasticism, culminating in the work of Thomas Res- uh, resurrected re- reason is a tool of understanding coordinated it to spiritual uh, revelation and re- revealed truths of So, the intellectual and political uh, edifice of Christianity, seemingly impregnable in the Middle Ages, fell in turn to the assaults made on humanism, Renaissance, and Protestant religion. So the humanism bred the experimental science of Francis Bacon, Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Pernicus, and Galileo, and the mathematical inf- investigations of René Descartes, uh, Gottfried, Wilhelm, and Isaac. So the Renaissance uh, rediscovered much of classical culture and revived the notion of the notion of human creative beings, and the Reformation more directly, but in the long run, no less. So, they challenged the monolithic authority of the Roman Catholic Church, basically, for, uh, for Martin Luther, as for Bacon and Descartes, the way to truth lay in the application of reason. Uh, received authority, whether of polemy in the science or of spirit, subject to the probings of unfettered. That's all. Yeah. So uh, Very that's complicated stuff. That's it for uh, this section of today topics. And once again, you're listening to 88, 80, 87.3. And here is your study music. Hope you. Thank <laughs> you.
Oh, welcome back to 88.7, where we listen to classical music and talk about classical subjects. Today, we were talking about the Cybertech Revolution, and we just finished that topic. Now, we are moving on to the Enlightenment Mints, right? Uh, yeah, yeah so the, uh, a, subs, a subtopic from the main topic is... Uh, what are some of the contributions to alignment from uh, from Descartes, De Rot, and Adam Smith? Now, uh, Chase, who is our first person, Descartes, and like what is his like uh, contribution to alignment? Okay, so Rene Descartes um, was in the area of the late 1500s to the mid 1600s, anywhere in there. And he was a French scientist, philosopher, and a Roman Catholic of the Enlightenment period, who's often considered to be the founder of philosophy. So, Descartes departs from the philosophy of scholasticism with a concept of universal doubt. He put much faith in the scientific method as a source of knowledge. So, Descartes was famous for the idea of, uh, here's a saying from him, cogito ergo sum. It was originally written as Japanese Don't Stay Swiss. I think that's how you pronounce that. I might have butchered it. Sorry. Uh, they were both meaning, I think, therefore I am. Meaning that any thinking being rather promptly asserts and proves its own existence, existence only in itself. So basically, if you're thinking, you're existing. So Descartes wanted to reconstruct his own beliefs on a purely rational basis and began by doubting everything he believed. He arrived at a single piece of knowledge that he could not reasonably doubt, which is, I think, therefore I am. An argument ref often referred to as the Pogab, Kahagato. So in his attempt to rebuild his belief, Descartes also sought to prove the existence of God through that God in the mind of a thinking being. He also accepted the ontological proof of God that had been previously described by St. Um, Anselm. Following this assertion, he believes that the reality of the physical world as we know it, through consolation, uh, or sorry, the conclusion that God would not try to fool the thing of illusion. So for Descartes, the physical world and the human mind are completely connected only through God. Philosophers generally agree that Descartes was fundamentally unable to reconstruct his beliefs in a purely rational manner, and still hold the, the cogito, and still hold that the cogito may be the only known hold reasonable. The response to the perceived failure of Descartes' work had so later later Enlightenment uh, philosophers such as uh, Kant sought the, his name is um, sought to hold on to the values of the Enlightenment thinking uh, chiefly that. Human beings known as or know things primarily through reason. So other philosophers, particularly David Hume, and Thomas Reed, rejected the foundation of uh, Descartes' argument in favor of the view that certain empirical assumptions are necessary for. Despite the general failure of Descartes' overall goal, his work sparked a great transition in the direction of philosophy, which basically means he inspired other people. Um, and has a great influence on philosophical work today. Additionally, uh, Descartes made several advances in science and mathematics, particularly in geometry and algebra. Uh, and that's all I have to say about... Or not Diderot, sorry. Descartes. Dang. That was, that was deep. I was like... I was like, I can feel that one, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, I get, I get, I get what you mean. He was basically like, saying that, like, if you think you have, you are existing. Like, you aren't existing if you can think. And that's what his whole entire life is based upon. Like, that's, that's how he rationalized. That's how he um, made his beliefs. Stuff like that. Like, personally, I like Descartes. Like, I think Descartes is a homie. Like, <laughs> honestly, cool like, I'd be friends with Descartes. Just because yeah, he sounds like that. he made advancements in yeah. mathematics as well. I mean, like, he sounds like a homie. Like, yeah. Okay, Soli, who is our next person? 
All right, so our next person is Dennis Diderot. So, he was an important philosopher and writer of the Enlightenment. The Enlightenment, also as known as the Age of Reason, was an intellectual movement during the 17th century that enhanced the important reason. Diderot's uh, most important ideas were individualism, like alone, the use of reason, the power of nature, and the belief of humanity progress. So Dennis had a very important impact of the general way of thinking. As he went through a, a complete cycle of knowledge and worked to do so, and others as well, he wrote many genres in which he expressed his outlooks of the world, including pieces of fiction, drama, criticism, and satire. <laughs> he promoted many principles and ideas that are still prevailing today. So first, he first he promoted the ideas of democrat democracy. Democracy, not democracy. <laughs> Dism and atheism. Because he believed in the development and the advancement of human beings without having to abide by other by other people's ideas. He encouraged people to think for themselves and not to blindly follow other people's things. However, he did not acknowledge the necessi necessity of laws. The second reason was that oh the second part was that he promoted the reason in society to overcome challenges, like obstacles and hard things. So he, like, we basically think for ourselves and discover the truth. Diderot strongly supported experimental methods and philosophy and science. He believed that the nature was in a state of constant change and with no interpretation w was possible. <laughs> there I was also a ph philosophical materialist, believing that thought developed due the changes of matter. However, he always remained very vague and open-minded on both of this topic and on religious decision. Indeed, at one time, he was an atheist, but while later he became a deist, believing that God existed independently of the world. Finally, he became a philosophical materialist. The third is he promoted empiricism, that the idea that scientists should not only use reason. But they should also experiment and study the world of for themselves. Among many other ideas, he also promoted the ideas of equality in education and daily life. <laughs> His influence has been seen in the encyclopedia or encyclopedia. A refer a reference work that informed about the revel revel oh my gosh revolutionary <laughs> political views and anti-religious sentiment his ideas live on through his major phil philosophical works that include thoughts on the interpretation of nature in ellen bird's dreams during his lifetime he had a very big influence both because of the encyclopedia, PDA, which informed about the useful basic knowledge of things, and also because of his smaller works, which included artistic and po poetic ideas. However, in the 21st century, Diderot is appreciated even more. Examples of work celebrated in today's society, which is liter literary writing, such as The Nun, Jack, Jack is of the fatalities in a satirical dialogue from Mew's nephew. That's it.
Yeah. So the next person we are talking about is Adam Smith. Uh... Scottish social philosopher with a poli- pol- political economist. After two countries, Adam Smith remains a towering figure in the history of economic thought. Known for primary for a single work and inquiry into, into the nature of causes and wealth of nations, written in 1776. The first compre- comprehensive um, system of a political system of economy. Smith is more properly regarded for a uh, properly regarded as a social philosopher, philosopher who whose economic writings uh, constitute only the capstone to a overarching view of political and social evolution. If if his masterwork is viewed in the relation to earlier lectures on role of role officers in government, as well as to the allusions in theory and role si- sen- sentiments written in 1759, to, to a work he hoped to write on the general principles of law and government and the different revolutions they under undergone in the different ages and periods of their society, then the wealth of nations may be, be, be not seen merely as a treaty or on economics, but also known as a partial expos- exposition of a much larger scheme of historical evolution. Now that is all of our time used for this uh, talk session. Now we are going to play um, some Frederick Chopin, Noctum in E flat major, uh, op two, n- number two. This is 88, 87.3, where we listen to classical music and talk about classical subjects.
welcome back to 88.7 where we record or where we listen to classical music and talk about classical subjects. We were just talking about the scientific revolution and the enlightenment. Now we will be talking about the main people that were in the revolution and how they impacted the government and the founding fathers of the United States when they're building up the government. More on this topic is Chase. All right, so basically the Enlightenment took place from the mid-1500s to the late, late 1700s to 1800s, anywhere in there. So as the scientific revolution was taking place in this time, new ways of thinking spurred and scholars slash philosophers uh, saw some new insight in the beliefs regarding government, um, economics, and education. So the Enlightenment period stressed reason and the power of an individual. Also referred to as the Age of Reason, movement brought to change many aspects of Western civilization. So here are so many important people that are from the Enlightenment period. The Enlightenment thinkers included uh, Thomas Hobbes, who created the social contract, John Locke, who proposed that all men had natural rights, or natural rights, which are life, liberty, and property, and Baron de Montesquieu, who uh, proposed separation of powers within a government, and Voltaire, who proposed freedom, freedom of speech, and Jean Jacques uh, Rousseau, the social contract as well as Thomas. Uh, these men fought of uh, thought or fought thought of brilliant ideas. Sorry, to improve the government and the society. A few monarchs remained absolute control of their countries, yet still ruled with Enlightenment ideas. Some Enlightened des uh, despots include. Uh, Maria Theresa and Joseph II from Australia, who ended censorship and introduced free education, and Catherine the Great from Russia as she supported religious toleration. Ultimately, yeah. the Enlightenment ideas helped to stimulate people's sense of individualism and the beliefs in equal rights. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> I kind of took your spot there. Uh, why don't you take it from here, Z? Uh, yeah, the Lemon period is uh, so significant because it helped spark many revolutions in history. Uh, a few of these include the Glorious Revolution in Britain and the French Revolution, the Latin American Revolutions and the American Revolution. Um, the Enlightenment ideas were seen throughout many governments which were established due to revolutions. Alignment ideas can be throughout the U.S. Constitution, such as Gunlock's government power comes from the con consent of the people and the uh, primable, and Voltaire's freedom of speech and the Bill of Rights. The intelligence brought about from the alignment was taught around the globe and influenced many people to their countries needed change. Uh, this is seen throughout the French Revolution, which started towards the end of the Enlightenment period. The portraits wanted ideas from the Enlightenment to be a, uh, a part of the government. The ideas of the Enlightenment have truly influenced the way the world is shaped today. Uh, Soli, do you have anything else to talk about the Enlightenment? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. So, John Locke, Montesquieu, and Voltaire and Darcy Descartes, which is the natural rights, three branches of the government, re the religious tolerance, and the rationalism. So these, uh, the names and the ideas have in common are that they are associated with the Enlightenment period. The Enlightenment period was an influential and intellectual movement that took place during the 17th and 18th century. It originally or originated in Europe after the scientific revolution. However, as it is because of the philosophers and the free thinkers during this time, the Alignment Age was used as a blueprint for the American Revolution, the development of the American Constitution, and the French Revolution. Yeah. Um, so that's that for today's topic. 
Hope you guys enjoyed and learned a few things about the revo uh, Enlightenment and the scientific revolution. Uh, thank you, Chase and Sully, helping me out on today's topic. No problem. And see you guys tomorrow. And here is your last classical music for today. This is uh, goodbye from 88.7 and good night. Thank you.